It's time for the Newsmaker Show on News Talk AM 1480 WLEA. Good morning. I'm Brian O'Neill, and we wanted to uh, open the um, regular Friday show up with uh, Dr. Robert Heineman here. Dr. Heineman wanted to say a few words about the uh, passing of station owner Kevin Doran. Yes, Brian. Uh, I just want to express my deep feeling of loss here uh, in terms of, uh, I think it's been over 30 years. Uh, I began my Friday morning by going head-to-head with uh, Kevin Dorn, and it's uh, a tremendous uh, loss uh, to me, and uh, I think a lot of people out there listening to us uh, have a sense of loss as well. Uh, the man was a tremendous, uh, tremendous resource uh, for the Canisteo Valley, and uh, it's just a tremendous loss. Thank you very much, Dr. Robert Heineman. Dr. Heineman, I want to ask you this uh, question. There, uh, in both Albany and in Washington, there are media figures and there are political figures uh, on the Tea Party side of things who will complain about the establishment. You see that uh, the complaints come in about the Albany Republican establishment from the Tea Party in Albany. You see that the Republican uh, Tea Partiers uh, complain about this uh, in Washington and in some cases by uh, New York City uh, national media figures. Wondering, Dr. Heineman. Is there a similarity in what they're saying in that, you know, like the, they would always say uh, the national commentators would say that John Boehner talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. Right, right. And they also say that about um, some of the uh, Senate Republicans well, in Albany. Well, no, I think you raise a very good point there, uh, Brian. I'm sorry I keep interrupting you. But, um, no, they're totally different. And... Uh, I think the, the point we should make here is that in many ways uh, Washington is, is out of control. Part of it is uh, the responsibility of the president, for example. But still, in the House and Senate, the ability to try to bring these people uh, into some kind of uh, stable coalition or majority is very difficult. That's not nearly as difficult in the, at the state level. Uh, because at the state level, you have a lot of uh, a party, uh, much more party cohesion, uh, a lot more devices that governors can use, and uh, the power of money uh, at the state level, although that's changing a little bit now at the national level, uh, is tremendous. So that, uh, again, uh, the organizations like the Teachers Union, uh, the Corrections Union, and some of these other um, uh, SEIU uh, and AFSCME at the state level is really quite powerful. So their ability to uh, uh, produce a policy or stymie policy is uh, a lot, uh, lot more uh, effective. And uh, this uh, follows uh, across the states. Most of the states uh, tend to have much more disciplined uh, approaches to policy. And I think uh, that uh, analogy with the feds doesn't hold up particularly well there. Wanted to talk about Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, uh, you know, for a long time he stalled. Then he listed his conditions. Apparently, uh, most or at least some of the conditions have been met, and Ryan uh, does want to go forward in the race for uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives in Washington. Uh, Dr. Heineman, it looks like now Reed's press secretary made a clarification that Reed did not issue an endorsement on Thursday of Ryan. But the statement that Reed made was pretty, uh, yeah. was pretty glowing and pretty yes. praising of Paul Ryan. Well, Your thoughts so. on that? And uh, also, um, whoever gets this, do you have a sense that Reed's going to move up? Because I kind of have that feeling. Whoever gets the House Speakership uh -huh. job, that Tom Reed. Uh, might move up a little bit. Yes, yes. Well, he has a lot of connections, and he knows all the candidates. Yes. Well, I think uh, you touched on a number of points there, Brian. But uh, the uh, the one point that I apparently uh, one of my other uh, contacts in Washington made uh, in the House, in fact, 
was that this uh, Freedom Caucus isn't nearly as large as the press and maybe the Freedom Caucus would like to uh, uh, portray it as. Um, instead of about 40 members, uh, the guy was, uh, uh, one of the members of Congress was suggesting it was more like 15 or 20. Now, they may have 40 people who meet and vote, but how many of them are just solid zealots? How many are really into it? Yeah, quite a bit less than that. In any case, uh, Ryan met with these people, and it looks like he's in pretty solid shape in terms of uh, assuming the speakership uh, next week. And it looks like there's a lot of Democrats who are kind of uh, uh, giving a sigh of relief at this point, and they're not going to vote for him, of course, because on a vote like that, they're going to stick behind Pelosi, and uh, the Republicans will stick behind um, Ryan, and there may be a few mavericks run off in one direction or another. Uh, and it is interesting in a number of respects. One is that Paul Ryan really stands out as uh, a public servant and as somebody that uh, uh, the parties across the board uh, respect. Now, you may not agree with his conservative approach to a lot of things, but nobody... Uh, uh, feels that the man is dishonest or corrupt or in any sense uh, duplicitous. Uh, and I think that's a talk, talk about a, fre- a breath of fresh air. I think uh, he certainly provides that. On the other hand, taking the speaker's spot, um, you know, is sort of the, the end of the road for most people. You don't, I don't know that any speaker of the House has ever been uh, elected president. Uh, now, it may be uh, all, all kinds of other things can happen, and obviously we're living in a time of uh, political flux, so uh, who knows. Now, your point on Reid, I think, is well taken in the sense that uh, Ryan, if he becomes Speaker of the House, I think is definitely going to look towards some changes. And uh, being uh, chair of the House Ways and Means Committee, which in many ways is the most important committee in the House. It's the committee that handles all tax legislation. And as you may know, uh, the Constitution specifically provides that the House of Representatives must consider revenue legislation first. So that makes the House Ways and Means Committee even more important. Uh, And uh, our Congressman Tom Reed Uh, has been a member of the House Ways and Means Committee for, I think, two terms now. And I believe he knows Paul Ryan pretty well. I know, gee, it's been two or three years ago he was talking to me about, uh, and they work out together. uh, He speaks highly of a lot of people uh, in Congress. Paul Ryan, you know, we talk about, Dr. Heineman, we talk about Reed getting some better positions in the House of Representatives. What sort of positions do you think that Reed will get? I think, uh, though, he did run for a leadership position here last time around, and there may be uh, an effort to move him, say, as chairman of the House caucus or or the the Republican caucus or Republican conference, or he may get moved uh, to some other spots. The thing about Reid is he's somebody you can depend on, and I think Ryan will be looking for people like that who are reasonably moderate, but who are solidly dependent and who do their homework. Reed is uh, is well known for uh, having done uh, a lot of research and background when he comes in to deal with bills and legislation. So, yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right that uh, uh, our congressman could do all right uh, in this situation, and we certainly hope he does. All right. Uh, the Hillary Rodham Clinton hearings, the Benghazi Committee, uh, the first hearings were held on Thursday. From um, reading Bloomberg and from listening to Jamie Dupree on the Sean Hannity Show, Jamie Dupree is a Washington reporter. All the reports that I read and heard said that there were no major problematic moments for Hillary. Well, I guess we'll have to let this uh, digest a little bit and let Hillary uh, see if Hillary's uh, testimony com- t- continues. It is continuing to. I think uh, people will have to take a look at her responses and uh, see uh, how uh, effective she is in avoiding uh, some of the problems uh, tied to Benghazi. And so I think that this is a 
ongoing situation that's uh, going to need uh, a little more time to uh, get a better analysis of what was said. And uh, again, uh, from the Republican point of view, if in fact uh, it turns out to be kind of a non-starter, that's probably a good thing for the Republicans. Uh, so uh, probably uh, better to just move on. And as you know, uh, Hillary is uh, at this point the undisputed uh, leader there for the nomination with the um, decision of Joe Biden to, uh, to decide not to run. And uh, so now her primary opponent, I guess, will be Bernie Sanders. And uh, I so we'll just have to see how that plays out. Bernie obviously is, is uh, building some momentum. Apparently he's doing all right in terms of raising money as well. Um, so um, he could be a bit of an embarrassment for her. I, whether he'll be able to stop her from getting the nomination, I think is. On the Benghazi hearings, apparently Trey Gowdy got into it uh, pretty intensely with uh, Congressman Elijah Gowdy uh, Cummings. It was Gowdy versus Trummings at, yeah, well, uh, Cummings I, at one point. Again, not to interrupt you unduly here, but we can expect this from Cummings. As you recall, and I think it was the IRS investigations, Cummings threw a tantrum to basically uh, distract um, attention from the um, testimony of the lady from uh, IRS. So the whole story was Cummings is unhappy because I think Gowdy tried to shut him off uh, from asking questions of some of right. that sort. And so Cummings is notorious for sort of this sort of approach, and uh, I think you'll see more of that uh, from him. I, I don't know how much substance you get uh, in that respect. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Brian. And um, things got a little testy, they say, between uh, Congressman Jim Jordan, a Republican Ohio congressman. Uh, he told Hillary that he did not buy the whole thing, that uh, there was a YouTube video, uh, an anti-Islamic YouTube video that created the whole Benghazi attack. Right. Hillary Clinton responded, I'm sorry that doesn't fit your narrative, Congressman. I can only tell you what the facts were. And then you had, uh, as I said, the argument between uh, Trey Gowdy and Elijah Cummings. Indiana Republican Susan Brooks told Hillary that uh, there was a lack of interest uh, from you in 2012. Uh, Hillary Clinton said uh, she did not do most of the government business by email. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of back yeah, and forth. Yeah, well, I don't think we're going too far here, uh, Brian. I think um, uh, Hillary, if you look at Hillary's uh, history, she has left uh, people hanging uh, again and again and again. And with regard to this video here that they blamed this guy out in Los Angeles, I think, for somehow precipitating uh, a, a street riot, and I think the guy went to jail for right. a year or so uh, when it appears that he had nothing to do with it, that this was a, a, a planned terrorist attack. And here Hillary's saying, well, gee, uh, it doesn't fit your story. I mean, again and again, you look at uh, Hillary's record from Waco all the way up through Benghazi, and uh, there are a lot of people who've died. And uh, did she have? Did she intend anything of that sort? Well, no. But uh, her, a lot of this happened on her watch. And I think as we move along, more and more of this stuff is going to be dredged up. And I do think when you're talking about, let's say you're talking about a matchup between Trump and Hillary, um, Hillary is carrying so much baggage. And I don't think Trump will pull would pull any punches on any of this sort of thing. I mean, after all, he's blaming. Uh, George Bush for uh, the 911 attacks and asserting that if he were president, uh, those attacks would have been prevented. I mean, a guy can make those kinds of statements. Certainly, it seems to me, is not going to hesitate to bring up things like Waco and Whitewater and the uh, uh, death of, um, what was that guy's name they found lying out there along the... Vince Foster, was it, who uh, apparently committed suicide, and maybe he did. I think he probably did, but where he committed suicide, uh, who knows. Um, and, uh, I mean, and her uh, in, uh, investments in cattle futures and uh, making $100,000 there and just uh, investing a few thousand. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And somebody like Trump 
will not hesitate to just keep blasting away, it seems to me. Not that Trump doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, issues that he has to deal with, most of them his mouth. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it could be it could be really bizarre here as we move into the election. And in fact, it's getting pretty bizarre already, I think. Think you not, Brian? I mean, well, isn't this from, pretty reading, strange? from reading the Drudge Report yesterday, it shows that uh, Ben Carson and Donald Trump are still way up there. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. Heineman? Well, I see that uh, Carson has moved ahead of Trump in Iowa. And what uh, is interesting, and, and I think this makes some sense, is that uh, Carson is doing very well among uh, women voters. Uh, he's ahead of Trump, uh, I don't know, 20-some points, I think, among uh, women voters. And uh, whereas he and uh, – now, this is in Iowa again – uh, he and Trump break pretty much even among male voters. And I think uh, Carson's style, uh, laid back, uh, fairly mellow, although he clearly is conservative. I don't think there's any question about that. But I think it has kind of an appeal, perhaps, to uh, the uh, female voters. And um, as compared to a guy like Trump, who's made all these uh, totally anti-women uh, kind of uh, statements, so they may be coming back to, uh, to haunt uh, Trump, and uh, that's the Carson's benefit. And, again, I really don't have anything against Ben Carson. I just think he's a little too laid back for my uh, purposes. On the Newsmaker Show with Dr. Robert Heineman, here on this Friday in October, back in just a moment. Brian O'Neill on the Newsmaker Show with Dr. Robert Heineman. WikiLeaks, there was a WikiLeaks uh, dump, as they say. 1,500 uh, emails uh, from the CIA that were uh, published Wednesday talking about Afghanistan, torture, U.S. policy thoughts uh, about Iran, and uh, a lot of emails uh, from CIA Director John Brennan's personal email account. <laughs> Your thoughts on the WikiLeaks stump, Dr. Well, Hyman. I think uh, uh, in, increasingly, and I, who knows what all these emails say, and frankly, to a certain extent, who cares? But it, I think what they're trying to show is that uh, nobody's um, email is, is really secure in that respect. Now, um, can they break into uh, all of the uh, email um, correspondence? Um, uh, correspondence? Uh, I think not. Uh, I think uh, that uh, military intelligence and such has pretty secure um, barriers uh, to this kind of hacking. But uh, when you move beyond some of these really top security kinds of um, communications, um, obviously they're vulnerable. Not that they don't have some uh, protections, but obviously these guys are able to uh, cut through the passwords, et cetera, and get in, into them. And there are all kinds of ways of doing that. Um, so, uh, for example, businessmen uh, visiting China uh, cannot use their cell phones. Uh, they have to, I guess they pick up these little um, uh, cell phones you can buy for a few bucks at uh, Walmart or whatever and, and operate off those. They take their regular cell phones in there. The Chinese get into those. They can then go into their um, protected um, files at, uh, say, at corporate headquarters or the kind of research they're doing. And uh, again and again, corporations have found that uh, products that they were getting ready to uh, uh, put on the market, the Chinese had already uh, stolen the, uh, the plans. So uh, anybody visiting China, for example, uh, has to be very careful um, what they're using in terms of this uh, um, digital communication. And if they can do that, obviously uh, there's all kinds of other hackers out there uh, getting into these files. Um, and uh, so my uh, approach is that you assume that everything you email or put on, the, um, on your cell phone is somebody's listening in on it. And they probably are. Not that there's anything of interest in our end of the world, but uh, it gives you an idea how transparent things are. Dr. Robert Heineman, there's a report out, uh, Associated Press broke this story 
The head of the FBI said yesterday that the FBI used its aircraft above Ferguson, Missouri, last year to help uh, keep track of unrest on the ground. They said, uh, the FBI said that they were asked to do that by the uh, law enforcement agencies in Ferguson and uh, that they uh, flew over just to see, you know, what was going on and to help the uh, local law enforcement there. Now, yeah. Any thoughts on that? Well, I think the, the FBI works with uh, local law enforcement all the time. And uh, it would be nice to see uh, this cooperation uh, continue. But then you look at a situation like San Francisco, which has declared itself a sanctuary city, and the feds uh, want them to hold uh, this fellow who had, uh, what, crossed the border, what, six times and was wanted on assault charges. Right. Ends up murdering this poor girl. Uh, and uh, San Francisco says, well, no, we're not going to hold them. Uh, you know, we're a sanctuary city. Um, so on the one side, you've got cooperation, uh, which makes some sense. On the other side, you've got these um, um, maverick kind of situations uh, that hurt people. And uh, it's uh, if you look around the country today, uh, you look around the world, but you look around our country uh, uh, the, the idea that you've got uh, any kind of clear direction here um, seems to me is um, way off base uh, these days. Uh, you got uh, the problem with the sanctuary cities. You have places like Colorado and Washington uh, where marijuana being sold recreationally. Uh, and uh, you have a lot of, well, you have the whole immigration issue. Uh, which really nothing's being done about one way or another, even though in many of these respects uh, they are clearly violations of federal law. And, um, again, uh, the Obama administration just doesn't seem particularly interested in uh, uh, insisting that federal law is supreme, which it clearly is or should be. Any thoughts on, you know, why they would ask the FBI and why not others like maybe the state troopers uh, helicopter division in Missouri? Well, I think uh, the FBI probably has much more effective uh, uh, resources in that respect. Sure thing. We've been talking with uh, Dr. Robert Heineman here on the Newsmaker Show. Again, the uh, the big the, the two big things going on in the uh, world of Washington D.C. No major breakdowns for Hillary during her Benghazi testimony on Thursday. Hillary keeps her cool. Was the Bloomberg? headlines the other big story is uh looks like paul ryan might get that house speakership job and if he does at the local level it'll be interesting to see what happens between uh, congressman tom reed and paul ryan in terms of you know would reed get on some other big committees as you said as you pointed out earlier he's already moved up pretty fast for a guy from uh, steuben county yeah well i think uh also, you have to take a look at the Biden withdrawal from the race, uh, Brian. Okay. Because uh, in his withdrawal, he uh, clearly did not endorse uh, Hillary Clinton. And, in fact, uh, a lot of people thought he took a few shots at uh, Hillary Clinton. He did. Uh, <laughs> so I guess you're one of those folks. So uh, the, the question a lot of people have is, what's going on here? Uh, is there something else uh Coming down the pike here, uh, is there some sort of um, revision of their uh, campaign strategy? Because you continue to get the feeling the Obama White House uh, really doesn't have much use for the Clintons. Um, so is there something else uh, brewing out there that uh, we're not quite sure what it would be? So I, it's just something to keep your eyes on, I think. Yeah. Sure thing, sure thing. Dr. Robert Heineman, I want to thank you very much for uh, stopping by here. Well, thank you, uh, Brian. And uh, again, our sympathies to you and your family. And um, uh, we'll uh, try to carry on and at least uh, as close as we can to uh, Kevin's tradition here. Dr. Robert Heineman, Alfred University Professor of History, it's always good having you on.